Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 has some more leaks. We'll talk about what to expect with WWDC as that's less than a month away. And also we're expecting some updates with iOS 16.5 and more. This is your news update for the week of May 8th, 2023. Now we're less than 30 days away from WWDC 2023. On June 5th, Apple will show off iOS 17, Watch OS 10, Mac OS 14, iPad OS 17. We're also expecting an new MacBook Air, Apple's mixed reality headset, and possibly even a Mac Pro. We'll talk about a few of those things in depth in just a moment, but I just wanted to let you know that we're less than 30 days away. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. Now, the iMac has been out for 25 years as of a couple days ago. The iMac launched, introduced by Steve Jobs, and now we're 25 years later with many different iterations of iMac, from the iMac G4 to the current M1. Let me know which one your favorite is in the comments below. Now, Apple will start live streaming music concerts again, and this week they're starting to do that with Ed Sheeran. If you go to the Apple TV app, scroll down to future releases, you'll see it here that you can go and watch that concert and it will be live streamed in London. So this takes place on May 10th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. And if you miss it, you'll be able to watch it a little bit later that day, usually about an hour after the concert. So that will be available. They're starting to do that. And hopefully we'll see that again with more concerts from different people. Now, Apple has begun assembling the iPhone in Brazil this time. We're seeing them differentiate where their supply chain is. And as they move things out of China, we're seeing it assembled in India, also now Brazil. So they're starting to move things out of there, sometimes to Vietnam, now Brazil, India, and others as well. They're building factories in the USA. Now, a week or so ago, I mentioned that how GM would be removing CarPlay in future vehicles. In response to this, Ford came back and said they plan to continue CarPlay and have no plans to remove it. So I think that's a smart move on Ford's part, as more and more manufacturers really need to have CarPlay or Android Auto integrated, as that's a major decision in purchasing a car today. So while Tesla and Rivian don't have them, that's not a huge deal to me, but it is nice to have the option, as the maps from Google directly, even though Tesla uses them, seem to be better with Google Maps or even Apple Maps today seems to be much better. So I would love to see that integration brought into things like Tesla, and I think GM is foolish not to keep that in their vehicles. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments below. Now, AirTags have been a great little device. I don't think it's revolutionary, but it's nice to have them, put them on backpacks, know where things are if you lose them, but it's caused more concern and problems than expected. Both Apple and Google submitted a proposal for the industry to help fight against abuse of Bluetooth tracking devices and let others know when they're nearby if they don't belong to you. So they actually submitted this as a way sort of to standardize the way to detect if you have one nearby. So we should see more of this in the future, not only on iOS, but it seems Android and other devices as well if you have an AirTag nearby. Now, if you had issues on this past Friday with Apple Music, you aren't alone. Apple Music, Apple Card, and even Apple Support were down for some time. So that was a problem for quite a few people where it just wasn't working, and if you were concerned about that, it wasn't your phone, it was an outage on Apple's part. If you're ever wondering about that, you can go to Apple's system status page. Just go to Safari and then search for Apple system status. And on Google or any other search engine, just go to Apple system status and you can see right now it says all services are operating normally you can hit the little plus button there and see all of the different services apple has and their current status so it's great to be able to use this as a resource i'll link it in the description if you want to check it out now, if you've been looking to get a new iPhone or iPad, Apple has actually recently increased the trade in value on some of its devices. While it's not a huge increase, depending on your device, whether it's an iPhone 12 Pro Max or something else, the 13 Pro Max, for example, is up to $630 now instead of $600. It's only about $30 more, but still it's an increase where we've been seeing a lot of decreases around the different devices and things lately. So, Hopefully you'll get more and more for this. Maybe they'll bump it again, but right now they've actually bumped that up about $30, $20 on some others. Now, starting May 31st, Apple will be adding the original iPad Air and Thunderbolt displays to their list of obsolete products. So if you have an iPad Air second generation or even a Thunderbolt display, don't expect any new updates. However, they should still function as they are now, but don't expect any updates to them, whether that's firmware or more. But either way, they're now considered legacy devices. 
Now, Apple this past week had their investor or shareholder meeting going over their Q2 2023 results. And this time around, there were some questions that were asked. And when Tim Cook was asked about artificial intelligence, he said that artificial intelligence potential is very interesting, but that some of it has to be sorted out first. So that's something that you can actually listen to here with the second quarter results. You can listen to the webcast what they had to say about it, not only the results, but also different questions that was asked to Tim Cook and members of the team. Also in their quarterly earnings, I did mention this in another video, but they had a profit of 24.1 billion on 94.8 billion in revenue. That's down 3% year over year, but they also reported record profit in services, which is things such as Apple TV, iCloud, and other services. So they're doing fine. And they also said they're not going to lay anyone off as far as jobs are concerned. That's a last resort. So that's great for any employee there as well. This week, Apple launched 20 new Apple arcade games, and you can see those by going to the app store, going to arcade and under new games, you can see them all. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Splintered Fate, What the Car, Cityscape Sim Builder. I did try this and found it to be a little bit disappointing compared to things such as maybe Sim City or more in-depth city builders. Pocket City seems to have more control, but it's available for free if you subscribe to Apple TV Plus, so Limbo Plus and others. So they introduced those 20 new games. Let me know your favorite in the comments below. Now, before we talk about iOS 17, some new releases to expect soon and more, first I wanted to mention a few deals. AirPods Pro 2 are down to $199, sold directly from Apple, but on Amazon's website. iPad Air is down to $499, $100 off iPad 9th gen is down to 269 and the HomePod 2nd gen, not the mini that I have here, is down to 279 It's first discount that we've seen on B&H Photo. So I'll link all of those in the description if you want to check them out. Now, as far as releases, we had AirPods and Beats updates this past week, and those actually address some security issues. Now, Apple posted the previous AirPods security update and then also the Beats update. And if we go to Apple's security website, you can see those here. For some reason, they didn't show anything for the new AirPods firmware update, but if we go into that, you can see that they actually patched some issues with Bluetooth. It says when your headphones are seeking a connection request to one of your previously paired devices, an attacker in Bluetooth range might be able to spoof the intended source device and gain access to your headphones. They fixed this with an authentication issue, which was addressed with improved state management. So that's been updated for not only Beats, but also AirPods as well with the previous update. Hopefully Apple will give us more information about the new update of 5E135 for the AirPods very soon. But either way, they're finally showing at least the first security update we've seen with AirPods or Beats. Now, Apple also released a Safari technology preview this past week. If we go into it here, you can see it's version 169 that was released on May 3rd, and it's just a new Safari technology preview. If you're regularly making sure you're in compliance with different technologies on Safari and Chrome and others, make sure to check this out as it has some updates and patches as well. Now, as far as iOS 16.5, we can expect the release candidate, which should be the final version before it's released to the public, most likely tomorrow on the 9th or possibly the 10th. Sometimes Apple does wait until later in the week to actually release the release candidate. And if they do, at least we expect it sometime this week with its final feature set and bug fixes. Then we'll learn more about what's actually in it. It's been a pretty small update so far. Based on that, I would expect the final release of iOS 16.5 to be this following Monday, a week from today or so on the 15th of May. Then the next day or the day after that, typically we would see the next set of betas with iOS 16.6 .6 beta one. And then of course, in June 5th, we should have iOS 17 beta one. That's typically what Apple does every year. And then we'll have iOS 16 and iOS 17 betas at the same time. And as far as iOS 17, we're hearing even more as far as updates, according to leaker analyst 941 on Twitter, he says, love it or don't Apple doesn't care. This is a new maps live activity for lock screen, all iPhones where it would have a seamless transition when unlocking, you could view notifications over the map by swiping up as usual, and it shows most lock screen elements until unlocked. So as you can see here, this is what it would look like and sort of have an overlay that's always on your lock screen. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below.
Now, according to Mark Gurman, we should see a new MacBook at WWDC. We're hearing more and more about this, and the MacBook Air 15 inch is expected at WWDC in a few weeks. So it should have the same sort of specs as the 13 inch that we have here, but basically an M2 with a larger display. So we've been waiting for that, and it seems different suppliers are ready to ship this, according to DigiTimes. They're being stocked up in warehouses, so it looks like it's ready to go anytime. Now, as far as iPhone 15, we've heard a lot of different information about it. We're expecting it to have USB-C, which would be great. And even the European Union is getting in on this before it's released. They've actually said that if Apple plans to actually have different speeds of transfer between the base iPhone 15 and the Pro models, as many people have expected, that that would be out of compliance with the law forcing them to switch to USB-C anyway. So they're getting involved even before the product releases. To me, it makes no sense to have different transfer speeds, but we've seen things like this from Apple in the past. I think they should all just benefit from the benefits of USB-C's transfer speeds and be able to transfer all at the same rate. And there have been so many changes about what we think about iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max as far as what it will bring this year. First, we heard of new solid state buttons, and then we heard later that Apple would cancel them. So currently we have physical buttons. Many people said they would switch to a haptic button where it had a little taptic engine here that would make it feel like you're pressing the buttons. Basically, we've heard that this has been canceled. And in a recent shareholder letter from provider Cirrus Logic, who provides different components for the iPhone, they all but confirmed that the solid state buttons were in fact canceled and that Apple would use normal buttons like we have now. In their letter, they said among the, the opportunities they've discussed, a new product that was mentioned in previous shareholder letters as being scheduled for introduction this fall is no longer expected to come to market as planned. So it seems that it's probably canceled and analyst Jeff Poo believes that Apple will bring solid state buttons to the market in iPhone 16 instead. Mark Gurman again today confirmed the same thing that he also believes the solid state buttons would be in the iPhone 16, not the iPhone 15. Now, as far as iPads, Apple is planning to transition its iPad lineup over to OLED next year. We've heard this quite a bit, and to me, this makes sense in that I don't think micro LED is ready yet. Micro LED is a technology that we've seen here and there, but it's not mainstream yet in many devices. This is something that should take the place of OLED in providing brighter displays with more accurate colors over time, but OLED would provide for thinner displays so they can make the iPad even thinner. Although I don't know if that's a good idea structurally, unless maybe it's titanium, but either way, they're planning to switch many different displays over to OLED as someone where OLED displays typically bother my eyes with people. WM or the way it controls brightness. Hopefully they deal with this problem before they actually introduce that. But either way, we could see it transition next year, all of their different iPads, at least the pro lineup to an OLED display instead of mini LED. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the different buttons on the iPhone. If it's something you care about, or maybe you just want a better camera. Let me know what you want most from iPhone 15. And so that's everything this week as far as news, lots to look forward to iOS 16.5 and just less than a month away, we'll have iOS 17 beta so we can see what that's all about. Let me know what you're looking most forward to in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. Now, if you've made it to the end of the video, thanks so much for watching. I wondered what you think about these news videos. Would you like me to cover something else other than deals and Apple news and future updates, or are you happy with the way it is? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below and thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.